Weber. Good. And he's standing in the Mississippi River, standing at 20.25 feet, and that's up four tenths of a foot since yesterday. You find more drifters, I guess, in, in dusting and spraying than, than you do in most professions because it it kind of uh, invites, you know, that kind of personality. Sometimes you'll just be around the hangar working or something and the, the farmer will just drive up and say, uh, can you spray this afternoon? That bolt's going to have to come out and go back through the other way. Yeah. The organic phosphates, methyl parathionol, made from the same uh, base as nerve gas. As a matter of fact, that's where it came from, from World War II nerve gas. For some reason, this particular farmer uses a lot stronger doses. I guess he uh, thinks he's got resistant insects or something. Power spraying it, I wouldn't use that much. Because I've never heard of a, of a weevil that took a pound of methyl per acre to kill. <laughs> so you should have rubber gloves on and protective clothing and stuff like that when you're handling these kind of things. I was sick about uh, two weeks ago, and it was totally my fault. I got a pretty heavy exposure to it. I was cleaning out a hopper. I was exposed pretty heavily to, the, to it in the concentration that we put it on the field, which is pretty strong, and you get headaches and your vision gets blurred, sometimes fever and all that sort of thing. I think just about everybody that flies around trees and wires has hit limbs and maybe cut, a, cut wires or run into trees or something like that. If, they, if you've never cut a wire or run into a limb and they fly around them, then they're not getting close enough. We have flagmen that stand under it all day long, right in the mist, in the, where, where it's being applied, and it doesn't seem to bother them. Most of them now will move out of the way. In other words, they'll let you line up on your swamp, and then they will walk out of the way before you get to them. There is a lot of concern now about pesticides affecting the ecology. And I don't think that uh, anti-pollution uh, causes is going to cut down our spray because I, I, I feel certain that, that uh, they'll come up with acceptable substitutes if the pesticides are used now are banned. Once they start getting insect infestations, then it usually they start on a little spray program where they'll spray every uh, few days, usually about five days between sprays. You'll have some insects that are resistant to the spray, it'll be left over. And within just a few days, you'll have another population. So maybe in one season, you'll spray the same field 13, 14 times. I think all pilots get some kind of uh, enjoyment flying close to the ground and in and out of, of fields with obstacles and that sort of thing. It's, uh, it's a unique feeling. Knowing that, that if you do make a mistake, that there is a certain amount of danger in it, of course, keeps it interesting and keeps you from getting too bored with it. 
pesticides are, uh, by nature of, you know, of their job, they are toxic. Of course, there are some drawbacks to, uh, to using the pesticides that we have to use, but that uh, the benefit we get from them outweighs it. In other words, it's by, uh, the use of the pesticides is lesser to evils. The way I look at ag farming, at crop dusting, is, you know, it's, I, do, I do it because I enjoy doing it. And uh, some, I, I think somewhere down in Central America, I'd like to fly with a good mechanic, a good loader. <laughs> make maybe 50 cents an acre for as pilot pay and have a, a house on the beach and all that sort of thing. <laughs>